Hey everyone, so today's video is a really hard one for me to make. I have sat here for, we're on day two now since Kat posted her video about me. And at first it was really shocking to see someone that I've known for 10 years do something so aggressive. It really saddened me because there were so many things that were not true in the video. And obviously, I have my subscribers, followers, and customers, and so does she. So obviously, people are gonna pick sides, but things have gotten past the point of just internet drama, or things have gotten way past just things getting a little ugly. We're now at the point, you guys, where two days later, I get a call from three of my family members, and people from the internet, after watching her video, have found their numbers. They are calling my family, screaming death threats in the phone, and leaving really just nasty, vile messages. And that's really scary. And it's also sad that strangers on the internet who have never met her and have never met me are being so aggressive. Now, obviously, is my past perfect? Whose is? No one's is. I've definitely apologized for all of my mistakes. If you don't follow me on Twitter or Snapchat or Instagram, you can find everything that you're worried about or if you've ever had a concern about me. The last few months has been crazy. I've seen about 100 videos using my name and it's just gotten into this big circus. So now we're here. I would like to give my side of the story and my official statement on all of this stuff. I think it has gotten so extreme. Kat, I can't believe that you would post something knowingly and calculating it where you knew the response it was going to get. You are not some random friend of mine. You are a celebrity. You have paparazzi after you. You are a big name. That's, you can't deny that. And for you to use such a huge platform to say things that are not true and to get the response you knew you were going to get is so disheartening and so vicious. You end your video and start it by saying it's not a bashing video, I don't want my followers or fans to attack, but you knew exactly what was going to happen. So everyone that's attacking me and being aggressive and choosing sides without ever hearing me speak, that's fine, that's on you. But to come on every social media platform and attack my friends and my boyfriend and my cousins and my mother is so upsetting and I never knew you would take something this far. So I am going to go down the points of everything that she said in her video and all the stuff that people have been attacking me with and I'm just going to lay it all on the table. I think the big elephant in the room is this mysterious text message that I sent her which she said she was going to show screenshots on Twitter. She never did. So I am going to show our text conversation on camera because I just think it's fair and I really think that that's a huge chunk of the story that is missing. So I definitely want to show you guys these text messages. They are very important to this backstory. So about around December of last year, we had kind of started to slow down on talking. I started to get really busy with life and everything. I've had so many big changes ever since I launched my brand. And I think that is very important to note. So as you can see, middle of December, we hadn't really talked before then, but she reached out to me because she was doing some YouTube compilation for her channel about people who were like scared of clowns or something like that. So she writes me and says, can she have a picture of the clown tattoo I have? So of course I send one and I send another picture, it's fine, great. Um, and then you see me in January reaching out about furniture. I had just moved into my new house and her furniture at her house is unreal. I did not know it was custom made at the time, so as you see, I'm like, okay, asking for advice. You see my pink chair. So you see we're just talking about furniture, scrolling, scrolling, and then silence. It's the end of February and she asks if I'm doing a collab with someone, which I am going to blur out because that's just for private reasons so she asked if I'm doing a collab with this person um, and I said no take it to end of February I asked hey can I film me getting a tattoo for my channel after I asked her to film she goes silent I do not hear or speak to her until 
a few days ago. So a lot of people on Twitter were misconstruing what I said. I said that I really hadn't seen her face to face in almost a year. Last time I saw her was in September, as you can see on her Instagram, if it's still up, and it's probably on mine, where we Instagrammed a picture together and she says, best friends forever. So. Fast forward to, we are ending July right now. I get a text on Friday. And as you can see, all it says is, hey Jeffrey, I just got off the phone with BJ Betts. Please explain to me why you haven't paid him for the artwork that he provided for you. So you guys gotta imagine where I'm coming from. My friend has gotten very distant. My close, one of my best friends has just really gone silent on me. And I'm just sitting here like, there was never any fight, there was never any crazy moment, there was never anything. So I sat back and I got really angry. 100% I was like, is this for real? Like, this is so bizarre. Instead of calling me or starting the conversation anyway, it's just, and I'm like, well, in my head, I'm sitting there going, you're not his manager, you're not his lawyer, you're not his business partner. You do work with him slightly on some designs, I guess, but, I don't understand why it was her place to say anything. She actually had no idea what had already happened and what was transpiring. So, quick little backstory, BJ does some artwork for Kat. Now I know Kat has always said she does all of her artwork for all of her packaging, but BJ has done lettering for some of her palettes. So when I was developing my line, I reached out and said, hey, do you know anyone who could help me with artwork? I asked her if she wanted to do something and she declined, which I totally understand. And she put me in contact with this man. So I had reached out to him and I said, hey, I'm one of Kat's friends. I want to do some stuff, la, la, la. Now, my brand was non-existent at this point. It was an idea and I had started working on my liquid lip formula and that was it. I did not have a company yet. I did not have a website. I had zero products. So I asked her if she knew any artists and she put me in touch with BJ Betts. Now, he started an idea for me. Now, at this time, I think it's very important to know, I took my life savings from when I quit music, and I also find it offensive, Kat, that you would say I was doing nothing at the time. I had a very successful clothing line, my online presence was growing and growing, and I was setting myself up to launch a brand. So I think that is very unfair to say. But I do think it is important to know that I invested my life savings and every dime I had into my first three shades. Now, something she also did not mention is that initially she was gonna be the investor behind my brand. And what I mean by investing is loaning me a certain amount of money so I could start my company and then I'd pay her back immediately and that was that. She agreed to it, I have emails, and we went back and forth. She gave me a lot of amazing advice and I was really excited. So we're in the lab, I'm making stuff, and she kind of goes silent. And I'm like, hey, you know, like, what's going on? And I never heard back about the investment, which I thought was so strange because we're talking, you know, years and years of friendship. She said she was down, and then she went silent. So back to the logo. Now, so many people are harassing me and sending me the most nastiest messages about this logo incident. You heard one side of the story, now let's talk about the truth. So, the last text message I sent is very important. Now in her video she states, I told her to fuck off or go fuck herself. I never said that, Kat. Why would you make that up? The real message, which I think is a little scary and it's going to upset some people, is this. Let me read it to you. I said, first off, he, meaning BJ, never did artwork for me, and we passed on using him. What I mean by this is that he did start an idea, but he did not design my entire packaging. So at the time, BJ wanted to, well, I wanted him to, design my whole packaging for my liquid lip, and BJ started drawing a logo. He asked, do I want him to design my entire packaging? And I said, hey, let's start with the logo and see what happens. So that screenshot that Kat held up is like about 20 logos that he had quickly sketched up. At the time, I was stoked on getting something done, but I was also a little fearful because at that moment, I had invested my entire like every last dime I had on my brand. 
So I'm sitting there like, oh my god, this guy is like an amazing tattooer, he's a respectable artist, he's worked with her and done so many things, so I'm like, oh my god. So, long story short, I didn't have a manager at the time, I had just fired my entire team from music, a year later, here we are, I had no manager, no lawyer, no business advisor to help me. So I'm just this person that really doesn't have a lot of money left, I'm trying to start my brand, and point blank, I couldn't afford him. So when I found out what he charged, I was like, oh my God, like I can't afford that at that moment. Like, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna have to step away. And I went to someone that had already been previously designing my entire clothing line and the beanies, and my brand was called Beauty Forever. Now that I have a makeup line, I closed it, but all of those designs and everything are still online. And I just want to note that my merch in Hot Topic back in like 2007 to 2009, I had a star logo on everything with the J in it. And you can Google that, the receipts are all there. So fast forward to now. I stepped away, I could definitely not afford BJ at the time. I just didn't know what I was doing back then. I definitely learned my lesson. If anyone out there is doing business with someone, make sure you have a contract or a little agreement or something before you start working on ideas because this is how things turn so ugly. So here we are, my graphic guy did the logo for me. Now, it is a basic star off Google. I'm not tooting my own horn, it's a star. My name is Jeffrey Star. I got my name legally changed 10 years ago. I put stars on everything I have since the dawn of time. So, this logo, my graphic guy was like, well, let me do something. And I said that I was very inspired by the classic designers like Gucci and Louis and Chanel. So he did a mirror J, put it in there. Does it look similar? 100% it does. But did I steal the logo? 100% I did not. So I never stole a logo and BJ never said I stole the logo. Actually, from talking to him this week, I found out that he had no idea Kat was going to go public and show his design and mention his name. I know that he's a private person and he has a family, so for her to put that on blast without previously asking him, I find very inappropriate and I just feel sorry that he's now being dragged into this. What Kat did, which she shouldn't have done, is spoke for somebody that never asked them to. And she also didn't know that my current manager and lawyer were already talking to his manager and lawyer and we're working something out because long story short, now that my brand is successful, I wanted to take care of somebody who was work for hire and that had helped me in the beginning and inspired something. So long story short, BJ has been paid. He has been fully paid out. There is no debt. There's no pay your bills. All that crazy bullying and just psychotic behavior that I've seen is just so insane. I don't understand why people are coming so hard when they don't know the real story. So, BJ is paid, you can go on his Twitter and read it, there's no beef, there's no bad blood, and we might work on something in the future for a palette for next year. I write Kat back and I say, first off, he never did artwork for me and we passed on using him. The fact that you even have the nerve to text me after you are telling the owner of Too Faced Cosmetics that I tried stealing ideas from you from our lab is truly disgusting and disturbing. You and I do not know each other anymore, and the past is the past. Please worry about yourself and stay the fuck out of my business. That was the final thing I've ever said to her. So her saying I said, go fuck yourself or fuck this, I never said that. I don't know why you're telling people that, I don't know why you lied, but the proof is right here. I never said that to you, Kat. Here's where the story gets a little ugly. Two weeks prior to this conversation, I was at an event hosted by Too Faced Cosmetics. That is a huge makeup brand that I've been a huge fan of since I started wearing makeup at the age of 12. They were one of the first brands I discovered in Sephora. I think the owner is amazing. I think they are so talented and their products are top notch. So, someone very high up at Too Faced, I am not going to name that person out of privacy and respect, but this person told me at the event some strange things. She said, hey, we're doing a collab with Kat right now. Our photo shoot was at 10 a.m. She didn't even show up until 2. She's very difficult to work with, and we're just kind of at a loss for words. And I was like, that doesn't sound like the friend that I know. That definitely does not sound like Kat. But I have not seen her in months and months. I have no idea what's going on in her head. I don't know what she's going through lately. So she also tells me the worst thing I've ever heard. Kat told the owner of Too Faced, Jared, that I tried to steal an idea from her from the lab that we both use. I was like, I felt like someone had slapped me across my face 
Someone that I had known for so long betraying me and lying about me, and she's never really done something like that before or that I'm aware of. So this person told me this, I was devastated, and I wanted to, you know, get all upset and text her right away, but I said, no, let me file this away, let me take a deep breath, we haven't spoken in months, and I'm just going to file it away and keep quiet. So. You guys have to understand, when she texted me out of nowhere, talking about something that she knew nothing about, I was like, like I was on one, I was like, is she for real? Like this can't be what's happening. And I was so saddened. Someone that I'd cared so much for to betray me like that was just awful. So after seeing that, my emotions were very messed up and I did block her number, 100%. Cat. I have never judged your character online, I have never said one bad thing about you, and I don't plan to now. I am just really hurt that you're telling people that I stole from you, and that I stole from BJ. I think that is really the main issue here. So I'm going to touch on some key points right now about all the stuff that she said about me in the video, about the makeup lab, about her ego, of how she thinks that she, I guess, created me. And I think that is very, very important because I sat there after I watched that and I was like, who is so egotistical that they're gonna say that they basically created somebody? When I met her, you guys, I was very huge on the website MySpace, I had millions of followers, I was touring the world doing music. So for somebody to act like they invented me, I find that so offensive. So Kat, you told everybody that you basically introduced me to the lab and your approval was why I got through the door. What Kat did was, when I asked her about a lab, she gave me a sample of one of her products that was in a little vial and it said the lab's name on it. She said, this lab makes a few formulas for me, Google them, see if you can get a meeting. So she did not call for me, she did not walk me in the building, I called myself, I googled the number, I got in contact with the owner and the creative director and her name is Judy, shout out to Judy, I love you. And. The rest was history. So we first started off by creating my liquid lip and they gave me the most amazing formula. Everything was a go. And even though Kat was not investing into the brand, I found a mutual friend from someone that helped me start everything. So I think it's important to know because most people have never been inside of a makeup factory. They don't know what goes on in there. When I'm in there, you do not see what anyone else is doing. I know my lab makes a lot of huge brands that are in Sephora, but when I'm on the floor and my stuff's running, and I have meetings there, everything is off the floor, you do not see what other people are making. I didn't steal from you. I've never seen your stuff being made there. Sephora reps actually go for her when they are working on a lot of stuff. Now I think it's very important to note that I am an independent brand. I am not owned by anybody. This is all 100% Jeffrey. There's no chain behind me. There's no big machine. Now, when she signed her makeup deal, she signed with a company called Kendo. Now, they are a company that does Marc Jacob Beauty, Bite Beauty, Formula X, and also her brand. Now, that is exclusive to Sephora. So, when I get lab samples and I'm creating colors and eyeshadows and stuff, I get it sent right to my doorstep. For her, she has to fly to San Fran and go to Sephora's headquarters to see all of her samples. So mine is very grassroots and homegrown and I get things done a lot quicker, I can put stuff out very fast. Obviously when you are a brand that is in a mall or in a giant chain, things are a lot harder and you have to go down different steps. So I never stole the formula, I never stole an idea, I never stole the name, it's all just I, my brain is still, I can't fathom it. So I find it offensive that she said I was trying to steal the vegan big bucks. From my understanding, from knowing you for so long, Kat, you were never vegan until about a year ago. And I think it's offensive that you are somebody who believes in that and you have started to change your entire line vegan. Well, I started my brand with all of my products vegan and not because I personally am, it's because my following contains a lot of people that are vegan and I did not want to not include them in being able to buy my products. I also think it's safer for the eyes and lips to have a little better ingredients and I think that overall it was just a simple decision. I'm not trying to do anything else besides just cater to everybody. Another thing that was very disturbing is she said that I might go on a tweaker snapchat rant which I'm like are you really going to insinuate that to your large 
following of millions of people, I think it's very disappointing because as I've mentioned in other videos, I've never even drank alcohol before. I smoke weed every day. I have a medical car, it's legal, I love marijuana, it takes away my anxiety. I've never done coke, meth, crack, I've never done any hardcore drug. She is a previous hardcore drug user. She's now sober, which I think is amazing because alcohol and drugs can really ruin people and I commend her for being strong enough to take that away and for being a better person. So for her to flip it on me and say those comments really cut deep and that really hurt me. I think as somebody like her who has been smoking cigarettes every day for 10 years, to try to throw medical marijuana, which actually helps a lot of people, is truly unfair. In the whole time of having a brand for two years now, I think she's worn my lipstick once in a picture. She always told me that Sephora legally has her bound where she's not allowed to use any other brand that is not in Sephora. So has she always been a supportive friend? 100%, I will never take that away. But has she supported my brand? Not really. In the beginning when she said there was no bullying or bashing, that's what the entire video was with little implements. Kat has been on a TV show, you guys, for years. She's done media training. She knows how to get a message across by implementing certain things. And when I watched the video, I was so horrified by all these things because as I recall, yes, I may show off a car or two. I love designer handbags. I've been collecting bags even when I was broke. I would put a half a tank of gas and buy a Louis bag and that's how I live my life. Who is to judge how you spend your money and how I spend my money? It's really no one's concern. I'm not understanding why she's trying to make it seem like it's a bad thing that I have nice things when she has had a Bentley, a Tesla, a closet full of a million dollars of clothes that she has Instagrammed and also shown off for the last five years online. So I think that is very hypocritical and I've never judged how you spend your money, Kat. Please don't judge mine. A lot of people that are attacking or voicing their opinion on social media haven't mentioned a really key part that BJ Betts has really not said anything on social media until today. He has stayed silent. So if he did my whole, whole entire logo and all my packaging, why did somebody speak up two years later? Don't you guys think I would be sued or there would be a lawsuit? Everything that is legal is public record and you can Google it and read it and read it all online. So why do you think it's all being sparked right now? I think it goes a lot deeper than just a logo. I think there's a lot of malicious underlining intents and I think that's what hurts and breaks my heart the most. So. Let's just say it one more time. BJ has been paid. If you guys want to still attack me and say crazy shit, that's fine. I can take it. I'm a big girl and I know the truth. I just wanted to get my side of the story out there. It was really hard for me to even process what was happening. And right now I'm on a tour bus. I'm on the Vans Warp Tour, the Wi-Fi. We're in like a middle of a field every day. So after this, I'm going to quickly edit it and go to a hotel and use their Wi-Fi. So if you're wondering what took so long, I'm allowed to collect my thoughts and emotions. And I just want to say, even though all of this has gone on in the public, Kat, we have been friends for so long. I still have love for you. I'm not sure what you're going through personally, but I wish you the best and case closed. And I am going to disable the comments on this video for the first time ever on my channel. I think the back and forth fighting with strangers is so unnecessary. These are my thoughts and my side of the story and my journey and what I've been through with this person. So I leave you guys all with a lot of love. I never envisioned having a friendship breakup with someone so public. I'm sorry that you guys had to waste your time watching this and I just wanted to get out my side of the story. So I love you guys so much and I wish you all a good day. Mwah.